What's up, player? What up, players? What up, players? We're literally picking up girls in a helicopter. I'm gonna pick up girls as a fat guy. I'm gonna be doing some penis pickup. <laughs> Today, we're going to be picking up girls using awkward items. Would you like to buy some tampons? I can see your camel toe. Three young men say they've elevated the art of seduction into a science. Tonight I wanna dance for you. I dare you, I dare. <laughs> Who are these costume Casanovas? Jesse Kong and Jason, the stars of Simple Pickup. He violates women in the streets in basically every single one of his videos. That's the biggest lie I've heard all year. Can we like cut, we're done. For those who have been on YouTube for long enough, the chances are you'll remember the name Simple Pickup. And if you don't, then you'll probably recognize one of these two faces from some heavy YouTube advertising over the last two years. Simple Pickup was once the go-to place on the site for young guys to learn how to pick up women, and at the height of their power, their antics helped to attract over two and a half million subscribers. These guys were one of the first on the site to successfully leverage the business model of monthly subscriptions and make millions doing it. This caused many to point the finger at them and label them as nothing more than scam artists, an accusation that may prove true later on down the line. Yet despite Simple Pickup's once huge popularity on YouTube, you won't find the channel anymore as it's been renamed and all but a few of the remnants of the old videos have since been deleted. Their story of having gained a cult-like following and then building a multi-million dollar business out of it to eventually getting shamed for inappropriate harassment of young women and having a petition signed by over 30,000 people trying to delete their channel is one of the rare untold stories on YouTube. So this video will be a short YouTube history lesson looking into the history behind what was once one of YouTube's most loved channels that inspired hundreds of thousands of young male viewers. I'll be looking into the story of the three friends behind the channel whose relationship now lies in tatters and how one of their lives took an unexpected and dark sinister twist. So let's take a trip back in time to 2011 when YouTube was a very different place. A time when Rebecca Black was the queen of the site and Justin Bieber was still a young teenager who had yet to hit puberty. The rise of the pranksters like Vitaly, Tube, and Roman Atwood was on the horizon and Ray William Johnson, Nigahiga and Smosh were the channels at the top of the subscriber charts. YouTube back then was a complete contrast of what we see today. Enter Simple Pickup. In February of that year, three friends, Jason Roberts, Kong Pham, and Jesse Jarge, had all dropped out of college just before graduating and set up a channel named Simple Pickup. In their first video, Kong would approach college girls on campus and try and get their number, but to make it more entertaining, he had to include as many references to male genitalia as possible, something you would struggle to get away with on the internet these days. Hey, what's up, I'm Kong. And today, I'm gonna be doing some penis pickup. <laughs> Question, where did you get your Starbucks? Really? Sounds like a pretty schlong walk. Oh my god, he is so cute. Is it he or she? Yeah, it's a he. His name's Chewy. Oh, it is a he. I did see his uh, penis. What's your number? I'll give you. I'll send you a text uh, sometime this week. Three one zero. Three one zero. What are your plans tonight? Um, we, Do we don't know what our plans are tonight yet. We have to go talk to. Do our it. Friends. Let's go. All right. Okay. Seven one four. Seven one four. The video didn't take off initially, but the Simple Pickup guys spent time posting it to online forums, and after a stroke of random luck, the video started to be shared in a bodybuilding forum, which helped the video quickly reach 100,000 views. After the success of their first upload, they continued to release videos and quickly started to gain a following, and after only three months, had already hit 30,000 subscribers. The channel was essentially videos of the three of them picking up girls with funny pickup lines revolving around trending topics. If you three were Pokemon, I would choose all three of you. I have to say my love for you is like diarrhea. I just can't hold it in. All right, 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 all right. Okay, now ladies. Hi, I'm Jesse. No. We need to exchange numbers. I'm gonna hang out with you sometime. 661. 661. Wait, 672? 805. Is happening right now? No, it's not. Okay. This is a dream. Okay, this is a dream. Yeah, you're gonna wake up in like an hour, don't worry about it. Prepare for trouble. Make it double. So you guys wanna go out on a date with us or what? No, thank you. I have a boyfriend. 
What about you? Um, I have life as well. While this type of content wouldn't fly these days on YouTube, at the time it was unique and then started to gain a huge amount of popularity, so much so that at the end of 2011, only nine months after they'd started the channel, Simple Pickup caught the attention of the national news. Well, when it comes to the ancient art of romance, some men use flowers, some use chocolates, others put their faith in astrology. But three young men say they've elevated the art of seduction into a science. They call their te technique the simple pickup, and they say that anyone can learn their signature moves. That's Kong. Hi. He's wearing a tooth fairy costume. Stop. Here, let me see this. And yes, he's hitting on a girl he just met. Not to be outdone, his two friends dressed as Super Mario. I'm promoting Mario today, yes. You can, you can be my peach. And the Statue of Liberty. We should exchange numbers. Also get numbers from random girls. <laughs> Giving him a phone number. Who are these costume Casanovas? Jesse Kong and Jason, the stars of Simple Pickup, an internet sensation devoted to the fine art. What's your number? Of picking up girls. And this, the guys say, is what Simple Pickup is all about. Teaching average guys, they too can pick up hot girls. I thought you guys were cute. I had to meet you. For Nightline, I'm Sharon Alfonsi in New York. Jason, Jesse and Kong had tapped into something that no one else had on YouTube. By the end of their first year on the site, they had nearly 200,000 subscribers and a loyal army of young guys inspired by what they were doing. With thousands wanting to know how they were able to chat to girls so easily, the Simple Pickup guys started adding a few new regular series to their channel. Firstly it was their Simple Tips series, where one of the three would give out tips and ideas to help you with your confidence when chatting to the opposite sex. The other regular feature on the channel was the Drunk Time series. It was inspired by OG YouTuber Kasim G and involved the guys going out into local towns and cities and interviewing drunk groups of women while they were on a night out. Craziest drunk story, go. When I went to this nightclub in Hermosa Beach, I got drunk, I hooked up with everyone, then I slipped and the security guard just kicked me out. How many people did you hook up with? Like a hundred? No, okay, just five. <laughs> just five. Simple Pickup's timing with their unique style of content coincided perfectly with another event that was occurring on the site. At that moment in time, pranksters were starting to pop up in the masses and gain a huge amount of popularity across YouTube. While Simple Pickup didn't fit into any one specific category, they managed to slot themselves in between pranksters and comedy at the perfect moment on YouTube. This meant a lot of the young teenagers that were watching pranksters were also watching Simple Pickup. As their rise showed no signs of stopping and their viewers desperately wanting to know what their secrets were, they answered their fans' prayers and launched Project Go. Project Go was a paid monthly subscription-based product and the Simple Pickup guys would upload instructional videos, podcasts and Q&A videos to their website helping guys increase their confidence and get better at picking up women. With the introduction of online content, consumers from all over the world could access their product a business strategy that no other YouTubers had ever really tapped into before, and in this way, Simple Pickup were well ahead of their time. According to Jesse, Simple Pickup at their peak were making around two and a half million dollars a year. Last year, through this channel, we pulled in 2.5-ish million dollars in revenue. Simple Pickup had effectively created a new type of genre on YouTube that everyone wanted a piece of, and due to their popularity, collaborations with some of the bigger prank channels came in thick and fast. Crossover videos were made with FousiTube, Vitaly, and Jesse from Prank vs Prank. As a result of Simple Pickup's popularity, many copycat channels appeared trying to replicate their videos and take them further. In 2014, former YouTuber Sam Pepper had tried to get in on the action and copy the types of videos Simple Pickup were making. As a result of his actions, he was quickly accused of harassment and the story hit the news headlines. I'm Sam Pepper. YouTube Today sensation Sam Girls Pepper, Girls. famous for his prank videos, is causing a lot of controversy. In his newest video, he walks up to women asking yeah, for directions, like then grabs their behind. He not only has many of his followers okay. upset, so but like also advocates for women. Virtually overnight, 
Pepper went from YouTube superstar to YouTube sex pest. Evident from his recent videos that he hasn't changed. Not only is he violating the people in these videos, but he's also sending the message out to millions of young, unquestioning fans that this is a normal way to interact with women. Simple Pickup were caught up in the firing line as YouTuber Lacey Green took aim at Sam Pepper in an expose video and also mentioned Kong's name in the accusations. Sam is not the only one. Another YouTuber I've been keeping my eye on is Simple Pickup, also known as Kong. He violates women in the streets in basically every single one of his videos. While Simple Pickup's message was the complete opposite of what they were being accused of, unfortunately they got lumped in the same category and genre as people like Sam Pepper. A petition was set up on Change.org with the intention of getting the Simple Pickup channel deleted. Eventually, the petition reached over 32,000 signatures and had brought in a small minority of internet haters aimed at taking down the channel. Their response was to distance themselves from this type of content and the fake pranksters on the site. They deleted a large amount of their videos that were associated with this genre. What up, players? If you don't already have a boner, you're about to get one. You're watching Simple Tips by Simple Pickup. Simple Pickup's channel was changing, and in mid-2014, out of the blue, Jason, the man who had been so integral to their rise and defining their message across the site, disappeared from all Simple Pickup content. His obvious absence in the videos was met by many fans asking in the comments where he's gone. Kong and Jesse never fully addressed the situation regarding Jason's absence, and while Jason did appear in an episode of Tea Time on Simple Pickup's second channel, he didn't share much information or answer many of the questions the fans wanted to know. It would only take five years to finally find out what happened to Jason as Jesse explained the situation in a podcast. So with Jason, uh... It just wasn't working out from a business perspective. He was really good as like an on-camera person, but when it came to the business stuff, there was definitely like a gap in understanding and also obsession. Kong and I were so, so obsessed with business and marketing, and he was just not, he didn't have that same obsession. It was difficult working with him for that, where basically we kicked out a third member of yeah. like a, a company, and so it's hard to go back to just being friends you know yeah. especially as like the channel just continued to blow up and like he basically felt like he was no longer part of like this rocket ship ride that we were on a business decision from kong and jesse meant one of their closest friends was no longer a part of the channel jason did however create his own channel called simple misfits which moved away from picking up girls and the content he uploaded was mainly pranks which went with the trend of the time while initially the channel gained a few hundred thousand subscribers relatively quickly, the viewing figures didn't last long, and after only a year and a half, the channel stopped uploading. Jason eventually would fall out of touch with Kong and Jesse, and as of today, he now works as a life coach, a far cry from his former life as a pickup artist on YouTube. Both Jesse and Kong were now running the channel and had much bigger plans in the digital world. They set up a company called Jump Cut, and while they were dedicating more time to building the company, their channel started to change up the type of content they posted. With new restrictions coming into play on the platform, Simple Pickup also had to adapt. They started making videos around different topics like fundraising for charities and bringing awareness to important subjects like cancer and health checks. Would you like a free prostate exam? Are you guys serious? Yeah, we're serious. <laughs> nah, man, I'm good, man. They also started to make videos that followed the trend of social experiments and uploaded a video called Fat Suit Tinder Date Social Experiment. In the video, they had a woman arrange a few dates on Tinder, but when they arrived, she would look completely different to her pictures as they dressed her up in a fat suit. The video was hugely successful, sitting on 33 million views as of today, and while these sorts of videos did well, Jesse and Kong's attention was elsewhere. From 2016 to 2017, the views started to decline and eventually they would stop uploading to the channel. However, in the fast approaching death of Simple Pickup, Jump Cut was truly born. Jesse and Kong's attention had switched from Simple Pickup solely to their company in 2017, and over the next year, every so often adverts would pop up on YouTube or Facebook with Kong and Jesse promoting Jump Cut. Hi, I'm Kong, and I have helped many filmmakers and editors make a living on YouTube. For example, this is one of my students, Imaginary Ambition. He uses basic video software and editing tricks to make creative music tutorials without ever even showing his face. 
Many watching will no doubt remember these adverts as they eventually became constant on YouTube and for a few months, jump cut ads were all you saw across the site. The company continued to grow and the adverts hit their peak in 2018. Kong revealed that in that year, jump cut had made over $12 million in revenue. 2018 we did uh, 12.5 million in revenue. <laughs> Despite the great success of the company, behind the scenes, Kong and Jesse's relationship was about to come to an end. And this is where things start to take a very strange and dark twist. The journey of three college guys starting a YouTube channel to eventually going to two guys setting up a growing business was about to turn into just one guy. Jesse left Jump Cut in unknown circumstances in 2017, and his picture that was once on the wall in the Jump Cut offices next to the other employees was removed. Soon after, around early 2018, Jesse's girlfriend of six years and Jump Cut employee Kel Livson ended their relationship. But around a year after the breakup, based on social media posts, it would seem Kong was now in a relationship with Kel. After the breakup, Jesse decided to travel the world for two years and would eventually use this experience to set up a new company called Endless Options. During this time, Kong rebranded the channel and changed the name from Simple Pickup to Kong Fam as the content Jump Cut made was no longer related to Pickup. According to Jesse, the renaming of the channel was done without his knowledge and consent, despite him having not been involved in the company for over two years. So while we don't know exactly what happened with the fallout between Jesse and Kong, evidence would suggest it was not friendly and the two no longer follow each other on social media. Jesse's new company, Endless Options, had started to begin a sketchy marketing and advertising campaign across social media. In the adverts, Jesse claimed he'd found the perfect formula to get what he described as girlfriend quality women to talk to you on dating sites. I spent 26 months and $254,811.32 testing every single theory on how to attract women online. I hired a team of virtual assistants to make hundreds of Tinder accounts, testing different bios and different openers. I spent over $20,000 on running Facebook and Instagram ads directly to various dating profiles I was testing. I crawled through broken glass, trying to figure out the perfect online dating system. And I found it. A few YouTube reviews popped up claiming that Endless Options was a scam and a damning Reddit post titled, Beware, exposing the manipulative and false marketing in Endless Options by Jesse Jarge appeared online. It exposed the marketing and sales tactics as fake and the Reddit user that had posted it had proof. There was evidence that the messages shown of girls talking to him on Tinder were fake and one was taken off someone else's core profile. It also describes one of his most physically unattractive students, a gentleman named David, as being engaged to a supermodel. However, the man it was referring to is the co-founder of the company, David Malka. David Malka is a professional poker player who's a good looking and successful guy. And a look on the Endless Options Facebook page allegedly doesn't show David as being the most respectful man in the world towards women. According to a very detailed comment on Facebook, the woman shown in the advertising campaign as David's fiance, a lady named Leanne Joyce, was in fact his girlfriend and the two were never engaged. It also states that David dumped Leanne after getting her pregnant and then tried to pay for the abortion, perhaps not the sort of person that should be teaching men to talk to women. While this comment on Facebook can't be verified, it's interesting to note that Leanne removed all pictures of her and David from her Instagram account and doesn't follow David or Jesse on any of her socials anymore. Another incriminating Reddit post popped up not too long ago, accusing a company of illegally recording dates and conversations and then selling it as part of their product. Underneath in the comments, it links a previous post to David and Jesse at Endless Options as being the culprits that are allegedly behind this. Finally, this is where it takes a real sinister turn regarding the person Jesse may be. Within the original Reddit post that warns people of Endless Options behavior, it makes reference to a thread linked to Jesse's ex-girlfriend, Kel Livson. A Reddit user by the name of Cake Batter Ice Cream had commented on a subreddit for victims of physical and mental abuse. She spoke about how her ex-boyfriend was abusive and made threats against her and that he had lied in his marketing scams for his business. While the post has since been deleted, a look back at the Reddit user's history shows Cake Batter Ice Cream had commented only a few months before on an unrelated subreddit and had said, 
at my job, we make courses teaching people how to start successful YouTube channels. Now it could be coincidence, but this very much sounds like a jump cut employee. And when you factor in that Kel Libson's old Twitter account username is Kale Cake, there's certainly similarities between the username on Twitter and Reddit. So it's very possible that all these circumstances aren't just coincidental and that the user was Jesse's ex-girlfriend and she was referring to him. If proven to be true, the person we all thought Jesse was turned out to be completely wrong. This video has been months in the making with hours of research and in that time, having seen all of these things develop, I decided to reach out to literally every single person involved in this whole situation. I was met with complete silence and in one case, I was blocked. It certainly feels like there's a whole lot more to this behind the scenes and something about the whole situation feels very, very strange. And that is the story of what happened to Simple Pickup to date and where the story ends. So to bring this video to a conclusion, Simple Pickup are an interesting and forgotten part of YouTube's history. The reality is that the type of content they posted in 2011 of course wouldn't fly on YouTube today, but times were very different back then and to most, they looked like any other joke or prank channel from that time period, but Simple Pickup was so much more than that to their viewers. They inspired hundreds of thousands of young men to gain confidence. And if you search online in forums or comments, you'll find hundreds of stories from people that attribute simple pickup as the sole reason for them meeting their wives or girlfriends. They were ahead of their time with their business vision for Project Go and were the first channel to successfully roll out a paid monthly subscription service away from YouTube. And this is something we now see creators like Logan Paul trying to replicate in the Maverick Club all these years later. But the reality is Simple Pickup were the ones to set this trend in motion a long time ago. Kong decided to take the route of staying with a legitimate company that can educate people in the digital field and has a proven track record. And if you watch any recent interview with him around building a business, he's actually a very inspiring guy. Jesse, on the other hand, it seems based on the expanding evidence, went down a strange and sinister path. It's hard to see past how endless options could be considered as anything other than conning people into paying for a dishonest product that's not what it claims to be. So while simple pickup are now just a distant memory confined to the dusty back pages of the YouTube history books, for many men, they were a huge source of inspiration. And I think you'd be hard pressed to find a channel in the whole history of YouTube that had that much impact on people's lives in the way simple pickup did. So that's it for this one. If you enjoyed, please check out my other videos on the channel and thanks very much for watching and please don't subscribe because I probably won't make one of these videos again. <laughs>